everybody, if you're watching this, that means you're watching the replay. I wanna thank you so much for your support, for your engagement, for even your comments, your shares, your likes, and your follows to help us to get the word of Jesus Christ out to the world. Today, we had a special guest by the name of Pastor Gary Sprewell. He had a dynamic word from God. He talked from the subject how to open doors. I believe that's a prophetic word for you and yours, that God is gonna make some opportunities available to you. The Bible says in Ephesians, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. I'm so excited about what God will do in your life in the days to come. I wanna encourage you to like, to share, to subscribe, and to help us get the word out and listen. I want to encourage you, if you're in the Greensboro area, just to stop by, hang out with us. I believe it will change your life. So have a blessed day, a blessed morning, blessed afternoon, wherever you find yourself. And I look forward to seeing and talking to you soon. God bless. Peace. Revelations chapter number three. Let's look at verse number eight. What did you stand in reverence of the word of God? Revelations 3, verse number 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. That's, that's all I want to do today. Uh, would you just look at three people? Don't stop till you get to three. I need you to prophesy. Look them in the eye and tell them the door is open. Tell them that. You might be seated. The door is open. Be seated. The door is open. Um, brothers and sisters, I want to prophesy without calling any names. If this is your word, you'll call your own name. Um, that this is the year for 15 of y'all that will shout about it. God is about to open some big doors for you. I've been coming here long enough for you all to know that I like to trace where the children of Israel are. I believe that if you can trace where the natural children of Israel are, you can often trace where we are spiritually. First natural and then spiritual. And while we are in uh, the first month going into the second month of the year 2024, you all know that the Jews and the Hebrews live by a completely different calendar. They are in the year 5784. Every year I come here, I deal with the Hebraic calendar. So you already know that 8-4 is the number of significance. 8 is the number of the decade, which is the number pay in the Hebrew calendar. P-E-Y, which is the picture of the open mouth. You already know uh, that every number in the Hebraic numeric system not only has a numerical value associated with it, but it also has a sound associated with it. It also has a picture associated with it. All of which have some prophetic significance. Number four is the number Delet, D-E-A-L-E-T. I want you to Google that when you get an opportunity. D-E-A-L-E-T. It is the picture of a door. But here's the shout, brothers and sisters, that number four is also the number of creation. I, I want to put this in the atmosphere and see if three of y'all in the balcony would jump on it, that this is not just the season and the year that God's going to give you a door, but some of y'all, God says, I'm getting ready to create a door. If, if your neighbor ain't shouting, it's because they've never been blocked. If your neighbor ain't shouting, it's because they've never been denied. If your neighbor ain't shouting, it's because they've never had access denied. But I want to talk to somebody online, somebody in the room, that God is about to create an opportunity just for you. What, what, what does that look like, Spree? That looks like you walking in and them saying, well, we don't really, we ain't hiring today. But just for you, we about to create a position. That, that looks like when you walk in the store, a sale becomes created just because you walk in. I need you for the rest of this year to walk around expecting. 
expecting stuff to happen for you, expecting doors to open for you, expecting opportunities to be created. I need you to touch somebody. If your hands are sane, saved, sanctified, and sanitized, touch three people and tell them he's about to create something for you. He's about to create an opportunity, create a job, create a discount, create a position. He's, this is the season God is about to create a door for you. Now, that, that, that's important, brothers and sisters, because it is critical to understand the season that you're in in order for you to know how to align yourself with the will of God. First Chronicles chapter 12 talks about the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. And in order for you to know how you're to move for this year, you need to know the season and the times you are in and prophetically... We are in the season of the door. Touch one person else and tell them the door, the door, the door. Now, now I know we don't go to Revelations a lot, but in chapters 2 and 3, John is writing a letter to the seven churches. And John is writing in this particular chapter, but you'll notice if you have a paper Bible that your letters are read, which means John is writing, but Jesus is doing the talking. Uh, Jesus has a message for all seven churches. He encourages them, but he also gives some harsh criticism and corrections to the churches. All of the churches have some form of rebuke except the church at Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not up in Pennsylvania in this text. I, I know I know some of y'all say Philly. No, not that Philly. Uh, F Philadelphia in this text was a city in Asian Minor. As a matter of fact, it is modern day Turkey. And, and it is on the Imperial Post Road and it is in an important trade route. Uh, Philadelphia is a small church. Uh, but there's notice though that all of the churches that John writes to on behalf of Jesus have some type of rebuke or correction, but this church has no correction or no rebuke at all. As a matter of fact, it suggests that there is no fault found in this church. Well, you and I know for sure that that can't be true because if they're human, they got to have fault somewhere. Oh, really, you gonna act like you don't know about fault? Oh yeah, if you're human, you're flawed. Oh, let me pause long enough to just help you push your arrogant bubble. Ain't nobody perfect. I know, I know y'all looking at your pastor's brother just as cute as I want to be. I know, but I ain't perfect. I know it's hard for you to imagine, but I, I have flaws. I make mistakes because all of humanity has some flawed in them because the church is full of people. You are always going to find flaws wherever people are. I know some of y'all say, I don't like this church. The pastor's great. The music's great. But some of these folk get on my nerves. Church hurt. Let me tell you something. You can leave Evangel and go down the street and you're going to take you wherever you go. So if it was a perfect church, it ain't perfect as soon as you join it, boo. Yeah, because people are flawed. Which is interesting because how in the world do you not find any fault with these flawed people? I, I want to suggest that the secret is in the name. Notice this is the church at Philadelphia. If, if you study the word Philadelphia, you already know that the word Philadelphia literally means brotherly love. Uh, can I please suggest to you that I believe that there's fault in the church, but it can't be found because love covers a multitude of faults. Y'all don't read your Bible. Uh, let me put it plainly that God, for three of y'all that will shout, uh, has a way of covering loving people. Uh, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's what's wrong with some of you. Some of your business is always in the street because you mean cantankerous. Don't get along with nobody. You don't like your own family. Something wrong with you. If you are the common denominator with all of the crazy folk in your life, baby, they ain't crazy. Why y'all looking at me like that? Uh, uh, do, do me a favor. Look at, at somebody and tell them, I love you. I love you. I love you. I know it's hard for some of y'all to say. You ain't said that in a long time. So cough it up. Tell them, I love, I love. God 
God has a way of covering loving people. That's why I'm nice to everybody because I got too many flaws uh, to be walking around arrogant, stuck up, mean, cantankerous, uh, like my stuff don't stink. You have no idea how messed up I am because I love God and I love people. And three of y'all gonna shout because the only reason folk don't know all of your mess uh, is because you really love you some Jesus. Uh, I wonder if there's anybody here that can testify I ain't perfect, uh, but I love me some Jesus. Uh, I make mistakes, uh, but I love me some Jesus. Uh, I need you to touch somebody and tell them I just love them. I love them. I, I love them. Hmm. I, I, I know I'm a guest here, and I don't want to mess up your flow, but can you turn the lights up a little bit? I need to see the folk in the balcony. Uh, I want to see if they up there or not. Uh, tell somebody I love me some Jesus. That's all. I love, uh, I love me. And God has a way of covering loving people. There's no fault found in the church at Philadelphia. And for this cause, I believe God gives them three things that we're going to find in this text. The first thing we find is in verse number eight, God gives them an open door. Uh, write that down. Put that in the comments if you're online. An open door. Now, now the word door there is the word tura. T-Y-R T-H-Y-R it, it means uh, uh, an entrance, a way of passage uh, uh, to, to Ra. It means uh, an entrance, uh, a way, or a passage. Uh, write that down. It is an entrance, a way, uh, or a passage. Uh, brothers and sisters, what God gives them uh, when he tells them, I'm going to give you an open door, he says, I'm going to give you an entrance, I'm going to give you a way, and I'm going to give you passage. I'm going to try that one more time because you didn't catch it. God says, what I'm getting ready to give to my faithful is I'm getting ready to give them an entrance. I'm getting ready to give them a way and I'm getting ready to give them passage. I came to announce to the faithful. I came to announce to the consistent. I came to announce that God is about to reward you with a entrance, a way, and a passage. Brothers and sisters, you stuck on door, but door is symbolism for an entrance, a way, and a passage, which means for three of y'all that are prophetic enough to catch it, uh, this is the season God is about to give you not just access, uh, but divine access, uh, which suggests, don't miss this, uh, that whatever has been blocking you is about to be removed. Okay, you didn't like that. Let me try this. Uh, whoever has been blocking you, uh, is about, I know they think they're going to plot to get you fired, but they about to get a red notice on that. I don't hear nobody preaching with me. I came to tell you everybody plotting your demise is getting ready to fall in the same ditch. They've been digging for you. I came to tell you don't dig two because you'll only need one. Somebody is about to be removed who is trying to block you. Touch somebody and tell them the door is open. Now, here's the shout. Here, here's the shout, Greensboro. The shout is that whenever God promises to open a door, you've got to know that he's got enough strength, authority, and power to open whatever door he says he's getting ready to open. I've got a question for you. Who can keep our God out? I know they're trying to keep you out. Racism and sexism and ageism. And they're trying to say you don't qualify. But if God be for you, y'all not happy yet. Who can keep our God out? Watch verse 7. Verse 7 says, these things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that opens and no man shuts and shuts shuts and no man opens. Uh, I don't have time to deal with it, uh, uh, but that verse verse number 7 uh, is a reference to Isaiah 22 and 20. You really got to start coming to Bible study. It, it's a reference to Isaiah 22 and 22 where, where he's talking about the key of David. Uh, it, it speaks of uh, a governmental authority. 
which suggests that the God that says he's going to open a door for you don't just have the power to do it, but he's got the authority authority to do it uh, what, what it literally means for three y'all that will shout about it uh, is there's not a door ever uh, in any place uh, that God doesn't have the authority to kick open for you uh, oh shucks uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, I know you don't qualify but who cares uh, y'all didn't like that let me try y'all over here uh, I know you don't have the credit to get it uh, but who cares Y'all still ain't happy. Let me try my crew over here. I know your income don't match what you're going after, but who cares? Because if God opens it, who can close it? Tell somebody he's about to open the door. Yes, God, God, God told me to come to this church and to announce and see who will shout about it uh, that this is the year you will not fail. Uh, you didn't shout. I see your hand, but I don't hear your voice. Uh, I said, this is the year you will not fail. Touch as many people as you can and tell them failure is not an option. Tell them that. Tell them failure is not an option. Try again. Attempt again. Apply again. Because failure is not an option. This is the year God is about to give you a door. Some of y'all not going to like this. Not just to let things in, but to let some stuff out. This is the year poverty is about to be evicted. Sickness is about to be evicted. Stress, doubt, fear, drama is about to be evicted. God is not just evicting things out of your life, but he's destroying it at the root. Watch this. Acts chapter 16, verse 25, a familiar story that most of us miss. A very interesting and profound point. And at midnight, you know it, Paul and Silas prayed, sang praises unto God. The prisoners heard them. And suddenly, verse 26, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everybody's bonds were loosed. You shout at the fact that the earthquake happened and everybody's doors opened. But I shout at the fact that the foundations were shaken, which means God not just going to let your prison doors open to let you out, but if the door can't stand on nothing, it can't never close again. I came to tell you, God's getting ready to get to the root of your addiction. He getting ready to get to the root of your sickness. He getting ready to get to the I need you to tell three people, he's getting the roots. Yes. First thing God says, I'm going to give you, I'm done, is an open door. Second thing he says, I'm going to give you, is verse 9. He says, uh, he's going to make your enemies subject to you. Oh, God. C can I tell you the first thing he says he's going to do? First thing he deals with in verse number 9 uh, don't, don't look, just look straight at me. Don't, don't look to your left or right. But the first thing he deals with in verse number nine is fake church folk. Just look this way. Just look this way. It's, it's right there in verse number nine. He says, behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews, but are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thee at thy feet and know that I have loved thee. He's talking of people who say they sanctified, but they really sent from the devil. 
I, I, don't, I don't know if you're going to shout on this, but this is the year God's about to expose every demon in your life. God, God, God oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you got people that are close, uh, that you think love you and care, but you don't even know they just getting close so that they can get a good seat uh, at your demise. But I came to tell you, God is about to snatch the cover off of fake people in your life. I know, I know some of y'all can't shout because you know they fake, but you still want they, them in your life. God, I don't know. I, I don't mean to turn this into a counseling session, but God is about to fix that empty part of you. That draw close to folk you know don't care about you just so you ain't lonely. I rebuke that lonely spirit, that demon of rejection that's over your life that said, I'm just going to take whatever I can get, settling just so that you ain't alone. I'd rather be by myself uh, than to hang out with folk I know can't stand me. What's, why y'all not shouting over there? I know you want a house, you want a car, you want more money. I want real friends. Uh, I want folk that love me for me and not what I can give them. All right, y'all y'all not. It's right there in verse number nine. They say they're Jews, but they're the temple of the devil. Watch what he says he's getting ready to do to your enemies. He says, I'm getting ready to make them come and worship before your feet. Why? So that they know I love you. Um, um, God, I don't know if, if this means anything to you or not, but God in the next 31 days is about to prove to your enemies that he's in love with you. <laughs> if I knew how to dance, I'd be dancing right now. I said, God, is getting ready to prove to your haters. You may not like me, but I love them. Touch not my anointing. What, what, what I'm trying to tell you is God is getting ready to stand up for you. God is getting ready to defend you. God is getting ready to speak up for you. I need you to tell somebody, you better be careful how you handle me, because I'm one of God's favorites. Fool around with me, you come up missing. Don't mess with God with me. They're going to know that I love thee. That's right there in verse number 9. Third thing he's going to give you, verse 10, I'm done. Third thing he's going to give you, he says, I'm going to keep you. Y'all shout over the house, the money, the cars, the spouses. I'm shouting over verse 10. Because verse 10 suggests that he's going to keep me all year long. <sighs> but, 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 but brothers and sisters, um, uh, the church at Philadelphia, he, he says, I know your works. This was a church that is noted for having an excellent spirit. What, what, why am I calming down? Because I need to qualify you because some of y'all are excited and you shouldn't be. God says, I know your works. This is a church that's noted for having an excellent spirit, being supportive, being obedient. I know some of y'all think I'm cussing. Supportive and obedient. He says, you have little strength, yet you don't use it as an excuse to be unfaithful. Uh, see, see how the amens are dwindling down? He, he says, you keep my word and have not denied my name. That's critical because he's writing to the church in a season where representing Jesus is dangerous. They're killing Christians at the time of our text. And Jesus, through John, writes back to them and says, I'm getting ready to give you an open door because you are loving me out loud when loving me is dangerous. I don't come to talk to the folk that are sanctified when it's convenient. I, I'm not talking to folk who come to evangel because it's the popular church in the city. I'm talking to folk who come because they really love God. And if it costs my life, if it, if it costs me everything, if it means uh, I've got to lose some friends, if it means uh, I've got to lose some opportunities, if it means uh, I've got to deny my flesh, if it... 
Do, do I need to say that again? Deny my flesh. If you say amen, I won't stay there. Deny my flesh. You do know you can't love God and your flesh at the same time, don't you? Oh, no, you wouldn't say amen, so you asked for this. You do know you can't love God and sleep with every Tom, Dick, and Harry at the same time, don't you? You, you should have said amen earlier. Too late. You do know that you can't love God and still creep every week. Not every weekend. You do know. Your neighbor look real mad, don't they? I ain't, I'm short, but I ain't scared of none of y'all. You, you, you do know that if you love God, see, his yes means a no to you. Okay, let, let, let me say some stuff you ain't heard in a while. I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Why are you looking like I'm talking Greek? Holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Uh, do you know why he says that's reasonable? Uh, it's reasonable because it's called the great exchange. Uh, it's a just since Jesus uh, gave his body for you, uh, you ought to give your body to him. Uh, it's the exchange. And when you really love God, you'll say to men that ain't your husband, uh-uh, boo. You'll say to women, uh, why y'all looking at me like you don't hear me? You got to learn to say no when you want to say Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I know some of y'all can't cough up an amen uh, because you don't even get tempted. You just go do whatever you want to do. You just nasty. Uh, I ain't talking to y'all. I'm talking to y'all that say spree. It's a struggle sometimes, uh, but I got to kill my flesh every day. Uh, I, I know what it is. As good as I look, uh, as sexy as I am, uh, you know it's a struggle for me. Why y'all looking at me like that? All right. All right, all right. Sit down because your neighbor look mad. Just look at somebody and tell them, it's hard, but it's worth it. It's hard, but it's worth it. Oh, yeah, sanctification is worth it. Why y'all not shouting? I said, Sancti you do know this a holiness church, don't you? Oh, yeah, we got the lights low. We got modern music, but we still believe in holiness. Huh? We still believe in sanctification. All right. Sit down. He says, I love you, sit down, because you love me even though it's inconvenient. You love me even though it's dangerous. And because you love me. God, if I wasn't so thick, I'd be running right now. I'm going to give you an open door. I'm going to make your enemy subject to you. And I'm going to keep you all year long. Watch verse number 10. Because thou hast kept my word, the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. It's right there in your Bible. From the hour of temptation, we shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. What he says is, there is something coming. And I know y'all want me to prophesy your name and your address. That's not prophecy. That's called word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is a faith builder. So whenever somebody gives you something you already know, that's not prophecy. That's word of knowledge. Uh, this is prophecy. So let me prophesy and see if you can catch it. He prophesies in verse number 10. And he told me to release this over this house. Because you need to know that this year, somebody say this year. There is something getting ready to come to the earth that's getting ready to shift all of the culture. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know you thought coronavirus was the worst thing ever, but God told me to warn you that there's something getting ready to come to the world unlike anything you have ever seen. But he tells the people that he loves, because you kept my word, I'm getting ready to keep you. Uh, come here, come here. Because some of y'all are so nervous. Some of y'all are so anxious. Uh, some of y'all deal with anxiety so bad uh, that you're just nervous about what the future holds. Uh, I came to tell you, you ain't no need of you being nervous. Uh, just be faithful. Uh, ain't no need of you being scared. Uh, just live holy. Because uh, God said for every person that has kept my word, uh, I'm going to keep you all year long. Y'all not shouting. Tell somebody he gonna keep me all year long. What everybody else is gonna have to endure, you not gonna have to deal with it. 
I'm going to try that again. I said what everybody else is going to have to endure, you're not going to have to deal with it. Tell somebody, not this year. No, 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 no. The world may have to endure it, but you won't. The world might be in a recession, but you won't. The world might experience another virus, but you won't. You know why? Tell somebody, I got blood on my door. If your neighbor didn't lose their mind shouting, that's the wrong neighbor, find somebody else. Tell them, I've got blood on my door. That's the reason why I know the death angel getting ready to skip over my address. I've got blood on my door. The reason why the devil can't attack my family is because I've got blood on my door. And what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I need you to get out of your seat. Go to three people and tell them, keep the blood on your door. Keep the blood. Go tell them, keep the blood on your door. Because when the enemy comes up against you, he can't get past the blood. Watch what he says, church. He says, because you kept my word, I'm going to also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Tell somebody, God is keeping me all year long. That's the wrong neighbor. I said, find a neighbor and say, neighbor, God is keeping me all year long. That's the wrong neighbor. Find Find a neighbor that's been consistent. Find a neighbor that loves him some Jesus. And say, neighbor, God is keeping me all year long. I got to get out of here. But can I tell you, God is getting ready to give you three doors. And I'll see y'all when I see. The first door God's getting ready to give you is the door of wisdom. According to Proverbs 8 and 34, Wisdom says, blessed are those who listen to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. That's the NIV version. Did you know that wisdom was a door? God this year is getting ready to give you wisdom. He's about to tell you who to talk to, who to dismiss out of your life. He's getting ready to show you how to go in and out before the people. Tell some God's about to give me strategy. That's the wrong. Don't talk to them. They're getting on my nerves. I know they're on yours. Find somebody else and tell them God's giving me strategy. I'm not going to make the same mistakes this year that I did last year because God's giving me a door of wisdom. Ah, y'all ain't shouting good enough. I said God's getting ready to give you strategy because he's giving you a door of wisdom. The second door God's getting ready to give you is the door of wealth. It's right there in Isaiah 60 and 11. It says your gates, that's the NIV version again, your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night so that people may bring the wealth of the nations. Their kings led in triumphal procession. Did you know that wealth was a door? I came to prophesy out of 21 people. I'll make verse of 22. I want to tell 21 people that this is the year God's getting ready to open doors of wealth. I know some of y'all can't shout because grandma told you everybody not going to be rich. And that is true. Everybody not going to be rich. But everybody can be wealthy. And I came to announce to the faithful this is the season that God's getting ready to open the doors of wealth. Look what he said. He said, your doors will always be open so that people can always bring you something from the nations. I came to tell you, get used to people putting money in your hand. Get used to people paying your bill. Get used to paying people being nice to you. I look at your neighbor and say, are you the one? Come on, ask him, are you the one? Are you the one that's going to pay my mortgage this month? Are you the one going to pay my car note this month? Because I believe God is getting ready to use people to bless 
bless me. Y'all don't believe that. But if you are a giver, if you are a sower, if you are a tither, you are entitled to the press down, to shaking together, and running over. Some men give to your bosom. Tell somebody, I expect people to be kind to me. I expect people to use their influence for me. Some of y'all don't know what it's like for people to be nice to you. But tell somebody, I expect it. I'm a tither. I deserve it. I'm a giver. I got to get out of here. He says, I'm going to give you a door of wisdom. I'm going to give you a door of wealth. Here's the last door. And if you don't shout over this door, I ain't never coming back again until Pastor O invite me back. Watch what he says I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you doors of salvation. Good God Almighty. Oh, yeah. Uh, according to Colossians uh, 4 and verse 3 uh, a door uh, for the word of God uh, watch what he says uh, he says without with all prayer thank you uh, praying also for us uh, that God would open unto us uh, a door of utterance uh, to speak the mysteries of Christ uh, for which I am also in bonds uh, he tells them to pray for an opportunity uh, for me to preach the gospel huh, so that people can hear the word of God huh, and I came to tell you this is the year huh, God's getting ready to give a door huh, for your loved one to come out of bondage huh, I need somebody that say spree huh, I don't care about the money huh, I just want my family saved huh, I don't care about the house huh, I just want my loved ones delivered huh, please huh, please Grab you a neighbor. Come on, let's have some church. I said, grab a neighbor. Shake that neighbor. Y'all ain't shaking nobody. Rock that neighbor. And say, neighbor, my whole family is about to be delivered. My whole family is coming out of bondage. My whole family is coming off the streets. Is there anybody here? Shout for your family. Shout for your loved ones. Shout because God. I said shout like the door is open. I said shout like they're coming out of bondage. Like habits are breaking. Like strongholds are being loose. Like demons are running. Shout. I got to go. This is how you know I'm done. I got my thing. I don't need everybody. I just need those of y'all that's been praying that God will open the door, the door of your family's heart for the gospel to reach them. 2024 is the year your whole family is getting ready to get saved. I need you to get out of your puke. Go to five people. Don't stop till you get to five and tell them this is the year. This is the year. This the year. Everybody connected to your bloodline. This is the year. Everybody in your house. This is the year. They coming out of jail. They coming off the streets. They put the drugs down. This is the year. Hey, this is the year. Tell somebody the door is open. Keep on walking. The door is open. Access has been granted. Stand there and wait if you want to. But I This, uh, this is what you call a prophetic gesture. I need you to do like this in your neighbor's face. Uh, and when they ask you what you're doing, uh, tell them I'm shaking my keys. Uh, I got the keys. Uh, I got a key to every door. Uh, the enemy's been trying to block me out. Uh, God's given me...
wisdom. Door of wealth. And door of salvation. I'm, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you an opportunity. I know some of y'all say, this is real nice, this is real cute. But I'm not playing with this. I, I'm going to give everybody that believe God can do it this year. When I count to three, I want you to put your last name in the atmosphere. Some of y'all been praying so hard for some people, you need to call all of their names and put it in the atmosphere. And when you get through calling your name, I need you to let your feet prophesy to their future so that the devil know you believe the door is already open. Are you ready? One, two, three, say! Praise him like you believe it's already. 